Joe, uh, what are the major changes that you've seen in advertising during the past 10 years? Well, the first one that was really quite big um, and the most obvious of it, uh, was the consolidation slash globalization. That, that agencies, the, as these big global clients went global and wanted a global resource, they bought up resources and, and it was in many ways easier than starting from scratch, although there was some countries where you had to start from scratch. So that was the first big change. It started in, in the middle 90s and, and in some ways it's still continuing. The second uh, big change and in, in, um, trend in advertising was that, that advertising agencies began to acquire a lot of these other disciplines that heretofore were very separate, like public relations, like experiential marketing or event marketing, like direct uh, marketing or direct advertising, what they like to call themselves, and so on. So the agencies that fundamentally were good at mass media and created uh, big campaigns and placed them in, in mass media, the, they began to take on a lot of those different capabilities. There were agencies that started to do that in, in the 1980s, like Ed Nay at Young and Rubicam, but by and large, it heated up like crazy in, in, in the 90s. And uh, again, it's still continuing. I mean, the just a few weeks ago, uh, Publicis bought Digitas, which is one of the leading interactive agencies that has a history of database marketing, direct marketing. Their origins were Bonner and Slosberg, and they came out of Wonderman, Ricotta, and Klein. So there's a certain amount of morphine and so on, but it's, it, it's continuing to this day to offer as many different disciplines. And then, and here's where the industry has sort of fallen a little short, in theory is to put them together in such a way to maximize the client's brand impact in the marketplace by finding some synergies and, and this whole idea of integrated campaigns. What has been the major impact of these agency changes on the advertisers themselves? Well, two, no, one is that um, both of those have led to consolidation of accounts. Um, you know, you, you will now see in the trade press or, you know, hear about a, a large global advertiser is having a competitive pitch for all of their media, you know, for one agency to do the vast majority of their uh, work or to become the agency of record. They, you know, they, uh, the most famous publicized case was when Gerstner came into IBM IBM was working with, I think it was about 103 agencies that all doing different things around the world. And Gerster said, we'll never manage the IBM brand the way I, I want it managed to move it forward into services from hardware. So we're gonna consolidate. He consolidated down to four agencies. And, and you know, that, so that is, is one of the big implications is a certain amount of consolidation. The other one is that the clients themselves, when they work with all these other disciplines, you know, a promotional company, a public relations agency, a, a direct response company, they have to manage themselves the integration and, and making the whole thing work from a spending, timing, messaging standpoint. And with the agencies, big and, and medium, they're able to kind of help manage that for you, to take some of that load off you. So one of the reasons, for example, Walmart went to Martin, other than feeling Martin understood their business uh, problems and opportunities and their culture, was that Martin has a great history of doing a lot of integration. I mean, they're not one of the big giants. They're not a J. Walter Thompson or Ogilvy and Mather, but they they have had a rich history of sort of putting you know local marketing together with brand um, 
creation kind of stuff and getting into new media like the internet and so on. And so Walmart said to themselves, you know, we haven't done a lot of this, but we know we need to do more of it. So it'd be good to have a partner that really knows how to do it and they'll take a big load off our table to pull it off. How do you see the emerging role of the internet in the advertising business? Well, there's two ways to think about it, and, and I think about it two ways, uh, Noel. That one is the internet as a channel, as a way to just reach people and involve potential customers, will explode. It's already exploding. I mean, within 10 years, uh, it's gone from zero to about 18 billion in, in money being put into it. And that doesn't count company email, which is potentially another 25 or 30. So in total, within 10 years, that totality internet is probably as big as, as, as television. It's bigger than radio. It's gonna continue down that road. It's just gonna keep exploding. I think the impact of the internet, however, is at a more fundamental level, which is the level at which we think about marketing and advertising uh, in terms of relating to consumers and creating customers. What do I mean by that? Well, first, the internet has taught marketers that permission marketing is a good idea. <laughs> Getting people to say, I'm interested in what you have to say. I'd like to receive your stuff. Or, I don't own a swimming pool. Stop sending me messages about pool supplies and bathing suits. I don't own a swimming pool. Um, and, and you're going to just see that, that sort of opt-in or permission-based uh, marketing and advertising just affecting the whole spectrum. The second thing is this, the internet has, again, ushered in and taught us that if you really want to build a loyal customer or powerful brand preference, it's better to be in a dialogue than in a monologue. And, and the technology of the internet, of course, allows that conversation to happen. But people can do it in many, many other ways. It's just that, that brands and companies weren't open to dialogue coming back the other way. And now they are. And we're just going to see that more and more and more. And then the third thing <laughs> that the internet has created that goes way beyond the internet is that it's created this concept that by tracking people's behavior and choices in real time, however you want to define it, or on a regular ongoing basis, you both can get a better sense about what's working and not working and build up your knowledge of who your customers are, what they like, what they don't like, what works and doesn't work. So those three things go way beyond the internet channel itself and start affecting things like event marketing and mass advertising. I mean, they're now beginning to talk finally about interactive television. So, and, and magazines are looking at ways, uh, you know, to build chips in and uh, the big print brands are now both in a print format and on the internet. And so uh, it, it, it's just had this enormous effect and we're just beginning to see the impact